Yay. Thank you all for coming. Normally we have a packed house, but things are obviously looking a lot different this year. Um, I am April Halfrich. AJ, do you remember my name? What is it? Very good, Mrs. Halfrich. You have such a good memory. I've been with Facebook now for four years. I already mentioned to some of you, I started uh, as a basis parent four years ago. Uh, in that time, I've been not only a parent all four of these years, but I've also been a teacher. I started as a fourth grade humanities teacher. I've been in the role of a director of student affairs, which oversees social emotional curriculum. I've also been in the role of director of academic programs, which oversees all the academics on campus. So I actually have my director of student affairs here, Mrs. Personia. Hi, Mrs. Personia. And Patrick Carson, who is our current director of academic programs here at this campus. And now I'm in the role of head of school. So it's definitely been a very fulfilling career here at Thesis. Uh, thank you, Mr. Porter, our registrar. Thank you uh, for being here this evening. And I have my amazing team behind the scenes. Thank you, Mr. Trevino, for being here on Teams. And thank you for those of you who are joining us on Teams this evening. So for those of you who are joining us virtually, if you could mute your microphone and uh, turn off your camera and you can eat your dinner through this presentation. And then also if you wanna type any questions in the chat, uh, Ms. Trevino and I believe Ms. Luna Rocha, our head of operations will be assisting with any questions that you might have. And then if any of those questions need to be addressed here in person, we'll be happy to do that as well. So we're here to learn all about this amazing school, right? Is this the perfect place for your family? And it might just be that. Okay. So what, what are we? What is this school? What is this special place? So we are top ranked in the state and national rankings, and we'll talk throughout the presentation about this. Academic, academically accelerated, uh, open enrollment, and raise your hand if you have already uh, Registered your child, hopefully. Signed up online. If not, Mr. Porter will help you through that process this evening. Our open enrollment goes through December 15th, so we definitely have time. Best part is tuition free. We can save a lot of money every month. Uh, college preparatory, high performing, global leader in education, and we welcome all. The best part, I, I can truly say this from a parent perspective amazing, diverse community. I absolutely adore this school. Our mission, uh, we believe that all students deserve the opportunity to pursue their goals and dreams. Five years old, like why are we even thinking about that? Why not? Why not at five years old? Why not? It's amazing. So we provide these tools and resources necessary. We're going to spark these interests at five years old. We'll spark it throughout their journey here at BASIS. So BASIS Charter Schools, we preserve, uh, these students persevere, we push them, and we build that foundation. You have that strong foundation, and they build, and they build, and they build throughout their academic career. It's amazing to see. And we're even doing it virtually this year, which is crazy to see. These parents are seeing it in their own home, their own homes this year are doing it. So you can see that we have lots of locations, even in D.C. over there, all by itself. But we have 22 schools currently in Arizona, one in Louisiana, and we have five here in Texas. We actually have, um, they're all here in San Antonio, except for one in Austin. We're actually opening another one in Austin next year. I, I don't know if you were um, aware of that. And it's actually four miles up the road. They just announced the address, uh, I think yesterday, they just announced it. And one in Washington, D.C. And then actually are opening another one in Baton Rouge next year. So all these campuses were growing. If the demand is there, why not? Let's do it. Hi, welcome. How are you doing? Hi, sweetheart. Oh, as you can see over the years, Way back in 1998, 22 years ago, we started in ACES Tucson in Arizona. 22 years ago, we started and, you know, slowly but surely, we have grown 2010 rolls around and bam, the demand is there. And we're just continuing to grow and grow. People are seeing it, we're recognizing it, and that greatness is there. And why not? It's amazing to see. I got you in 1998. Um, many people, I think, work in this area. Um, 
we have a lot of families that, of course, in the medical center area work in this area. Um, we're in a really good area in this uh, medical center area. Um, we have a very robust wait list. That's why we encourage our families, of course, to apply um, early. It doesn't matter as long as you apply between August or October 29th and then December 15th. And I can talk more about the lottery um, too and how that works. And the magical date for that, Mr. Porter, is January 12th. Perfect. That's the big date. Everyone's going to be sitting by their computer, right, Mr. Porter? <laughs> That's the big date. Okay. So since 1998, the central focus of our schools, I'm leaving now, um, has been uh, we want to cultivate the innovation that prepares students to succeed not only here in San Antonio or in the United States, but in a global society. It's definitely different from when I was a kid. I know, growing up, um, very competitive. Okay, we want our kids at the end of the day though to be happy. We want to push them. Okay, my kids have never known any different. I told some of you when you came in. My son started in kindergarten. He he doesn't know any different. He's he's always known the basis curriculum. So it, it's very this is very natural for him. Um, we I've always pushed him, and he he thrives on it. He loves it. Um, my daughter does too. She's now in fifth grade. Um, she's challenged. I can tell you that she's very challenged here. Um, and when she is challenged, we have supports in place. And I'll talk more about that in a little bit. There's a lot of information. I won't read through all of this, but you can see that we have our curriculum. We have expert teachers. We have the student support in place, and then our culture. We need to make sure that we have all of these pillars kind of in place in order for the students to be successful because we have students that do come from all over and all abilities, but we have to make sure that we're meeting the needs of all of our students. So are my, are my, is my daughter and my son at the same exact skill level? Or are they at the same? Absolutely not. So how do we make sure that we're meeting the needs of both my son and my daughter? And that's what's super important. And that's why we have things like student support in place. That's what Mr. Carson oversees, the director of academic programs he's making sure that we have you know things in place like this uh, academic support and that the teachers are doing those interventions with the students we have our early bird and late bird program we have um our i'm talking fast or no i'm good we have uh our student hours so every teacher offers an hour where they they provide support for our students every week if, if a student can a student go? Absolutely. Do they have to go? No. Are they welcome to go? Absolutely. Our curriculum, of course, is rigorous. And we pride ourselves on that, to be honest. Why would we not want to push our children to be their best, to try their best? Do we want them to be complacent and comfortable? Or do we want them to push themselves to be their best and try their best? That's what we want for them. Um, let's see. Let's see. Subject expert teachers. So I, I can give my example. I always kind of give this example. I came in. I, I always taught middle school and high school English my whole life. I, I majored in English. So I was like, OK, well, I guess I'll just be middle school and high school teacher. I loved it. I, I can tell you that. I had a great experience, great relationships with those kids over the years. And then when I saw that basis had an opportunity for a fourth grade English teacher, humanity, I said, oh, I, I can teach this. Like, I didn't think I could do that. But then I was afforded this opportunity. And what an amazing experience. Um, because my my I'm not to be honest, I'm not passionate about science at all. I'm actually terrible at science. My poor daughter will never get help in Dr. Hamilton's class in science. I feel terrible. However, in English, not a problem. Literature, grammar, I will help her anytime because I'm passionate about it. Why would you want to put teachers in a classroom that they're not passionate about that subject area? And that's what you see a lot of times is you'll see, you'll have teachers in a classroom that, okay, there's like a science at this time and social studies at this time, and it's not like other things. So that's what's so beautiful about our system. So we're highly qualified in that sense. So we have that professional experience, that background that gets those kids. And we want those, so we want the kids to see our passion. You know, um, I was just talking to, Ms. Hassel, who's our fifth grade physical geography teacher, and she was talking about a cool dance that she does when the kids get something right. That's the, that's the joy that we want the kids to see when we're in front of them. I hope you know about that. It's okay, we're excited. We want to see that joy. So it's pretty neat to see. 
Any questions? School? Say that again, sorry. Are we at this campus, we currently have about 770. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we have a pretty large campus. On. So at about each grade level, we have 128. Yes, third grade. Mm -hmm. Great question. You remember that number, AJ? Good job. Love it. Oh my goodness, are they doing an experiment? Oh, that, I bet you that's a science experiment. So I wouldn't be doing that, remember. <laughs> and then school culture is very important. We want to make sure, and this is where Ms. Personius comes in. We want to make sure that our students are growing, not only academically, but socially and emotionally. That's very important. Of course, as parents, we want to make sure that they're receiving that support. We want to make sure that we're holding them accountable too. The way we communicate with our parents, of course, is very important too. So we have a communication journal. We're teaching them about respect, about honesty, integrity. We have our Badger values that we have. We have a different value that we focus on each month. The teachers also incorporate that in our daily lessons that they have. So it's very important to teach these children these values that they can incorporate in their everyday life. And hopefully at home too, right? Okay, so performance. So I see I work in many schools over the years, and I work in schools where just because a student has good grades on paper does not necessarily mean that that's where they are. If that makes sense, Mr. Carson knows what I mean. Though. Um. So we can measure it through report cards, or we can measure it through tests that we have. Um, we have various tests that we measure it through that we do throughout the year. Um, we do international benchmarks, of course, as they grow. We have the AP exams that we have. Um, the SAT, ACT, as they grow older, of course, even more than that, college acceptances, and then even more important, scholarships, mom and dad. You can see um, the U.S. News and World Report each year comes out, um, and we see all of these statistics. And what's very impressive here is that for the first time ever, um, Shabano, or Shabano campus right down the road here, um, was highly ranked for the very first year of being eligible. Texas, okay, very large state. Um, we are number nine in Texas high school. Yep, number nine. I want to make sure I didn't miss one in there. Okay. Number 91 in national rankings and number 19 in charter high schools in the entire nation. Pretty impressive for the first time being eligible. So, all these statistics show us. And of course, I mean, you're all aware that this ranking comes out every single year. Um, so, we're competing really with ourselves when you look at it. Pretty impressive. You think we can knock the camera out of there? I don't know. That's pretty, I think we can do that. I'll let Mr. Team know. <laughs> so achieving academic excellence. So how do we do this? Let's start them out young. So mom and dad, we had a kindergartner or first grader? Kindergartner. Hi, sweetheart. AJ's going to go to kindergarten too next year. So in kindergarten, of course, like I said, we want to make sure that we build that strong foundation, make those connections, teach them those fundamental skills, like building strong work ethic, time management, effective study skills. Of course, in grades five through seven, we want to start building those on, on that foundation. Okay, introducing the high level content and then start building that accelerated work base. Eight through 12, now we want to make sure that we're, okay, here we go. We're going to maximize that college readiness get them ready for success for college and beyond, really. So here we go, kindergarten. Look at some kindergarten pictures. Looks like they're having a good time in class, okay? So in the kindergarten classroom, what we have, we have is our kindergarten expert teacher, along with our kindergarten teaching fellow. And in grades one through three, okay. 
We have, oh, oh, I can go back to it. And really when we get to see the classroom, that will help a little bit better with this picture. Um, in grades one through three, we have our learning expert teacher, so the co-teaching model. We have our learning expert teacher and our subject expert teacher. So this facilitates the transition from instruction and foundational skills to independent thinking and active learning. So in grade one, they're no longer in a self-contained classroom. So in kindergarten, they're in a self-contained classroom throughout the day. Their cubbies, where they keep all their supplies, are in the classroom. When you make your way throughout the hallway here, you'll see in grades one through three, there's cubbies in the in the hallway. But you're like, how are they in a hallway? Well, they're a little bit more independent in grades one through three. They start making their way through the hallway with their learning expert teacher, and they move from class to class throughout the day. That's probably better. Um, the LET. They're like, okay, what's the learning expert teacher do exactly? So they focus on instructional methods for the whole class. They, they're the ones that do the small groups for intervention. Um, they do also do enrichment with the children. Um, and they, need, they want to make sure that the children are working at their best. So they're going to challenge the students when they need to be challenged, and they're also going to provide intervention when the children need to you know, get a little bit more assistance. Now, the subject expert teacher, that's what I was. Um, they specialize in our field. So the grammar and we get all excited about it okay and they lead student instruction now co-teaching it's a lot of fun it's something that i had never done before until i came to this campus and it's it's amazing to see that because we're going to notice things with two adults in a classroom you're going to see things that you wouldn't put through by yourself it's, it's you know it's a little bit easier when you have two of you in there you're going to see okay this student might be struggling here but maybe you wouldn't have that opportunity if there was just one of you so it's really special So we do have a lot of our uh, teachers here this evening, and so you can see it balances uh, liberal arts, fine arts, and then we, of course, you see we have engineering, uh, math, and then this allow, allows students to draw from real world uh, connections and develop critical and creative thinking skills. The kids have a blast throughout the day with these classes. They start with engineering in kindergarten. Really? They start with Mandarin in kindergarten. They have PE every day in kindergarten. You don't see that a lot nowadays. The kids have a really well balanced curriculum at basis, but yet we want to make sure that the children are also able to, within that rigorous curriculum, have the time to just, you know, be a kid and have that recreational time too. No, please don't be sorry. Ask away. Yes. So they teach them Mandarin. Please know that you do not have to be a Mandarin speaker at home in order for your child to be successful in Mandarin. I know firsthand. I don't know very much Mandarin. Forgive me, Miss Singh and Miss Chen. I don't know Mandarin at all, actually. Miss Chen is here tonight, actually. Um, your the children have such a great time with it. There's a lot of vocabulary building, um, but me how is something that they learn. I don't know what it means exactly. <laughs> but um, do you know some Mandarin? Oh, that's where you go outside to the playground. <laughs> but I know Miss Chen can, can elaborate more about our Mandarin curriculum. She, she's very knowledgeable about it. But um, please know that mom and dad, no worries, you do not have to be a fluent or even a little bit of a Mandarin speaker at home, please. <laughs> um, so here are those foundational skills that we briefly touched on. Um, these are what, unfortunately, a lot of children, and, and we know as parents too, like, some of our children are lacking in. If you walk into their bedroom and you walk in and it looks like maybe um, an explosion sometimes, um, but their cubbies are not going to look like that. It's not going to be a little explosion. We te the teachers are going to work with them through organization. Some children need that extra assistance with organization. They need help with time management. That's what we teach them. We teach them those skills in order to be successful. And we teach them when they're young. We teach them, and, and some children need more assistance than others, right? My son, academically, he does great. Organization, mm, not so much. Okay? And that's something that I communicate with this teacher. Hey, can you do me a favor? Can you work with him on? His organization because every time his folder is a little messy, you know. And those are the things, and that's what's so nice here is that I do communicate with this. I, I communicate with this LET on that, you know. 
hey, is there anything particular that we need to work with him on? And that's just it. Organization, because academically, on paper, it looks like he's doing just fine. But I know as a parent, he's got some room for growth. And that's what's so important, is that communication as well, and collaboration as a parent and the teacher. Across the There we go. So that recreation I talked about. So we believe that physical health promotes intellectual development. We don't want the kids, you know, you know, we want them to have fun. So in kindergarten, they have two recesses. They actually have their own playground that you'll be able to see when they head out, when you head out to check out the kindergarten classroom. First through third grade, on this lovely playground, AJ, I know you were checking it out earlier, has three recesses a day, which is amazing. And then they also have daily PE. And you can see too, all the other extra, we call it movement in kinder. And then the brain breaks too. I mean, the teachers just casually seek them in during these lessons, and they do a phenomenal job with it, I must say. Extracurricular clubs we offer. We have really a robust extracurricular program. And then we also offer volleyball, soccer, and we did this in our video, this for Sonia. Yeah. Oh, slow down. Yeah. Oh, basketball. Oh, basketball, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thought your time was slow down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, so if they get a little bit bigger, this is when you'll notice they have some lockers in the hallway. This is like the rite of passage in fourth grade. Am I right? You're right? They love this part. This is when you get to buy all the cool things and the magnets for the locker. This is when they start to gain a little bit more independence. Okay. They get to be on their own. It's very much like a middle school setting. But remember, we're teaching them those skills in grades A through three for them to gain this independence. So as much as you're like, wait a second, my kids, you know, nine years old, they're going to be able to move about on their own throughout the building? Absolutely, because we taught them that. We taught them to be independent, to be responsible, to be organized, and they do beautifully with it. Because I was that parent when my daughter was at the end of third grade thinking, there's no way she's going to be able to do this. And she did it because she learned those skills and the teachers worked beautifully with them. Fifth grade is when, you know, we start to, to, you know, move into a little bit more. They have two science classes in fifth grade. They also move into, instead of having Mandarin in fifth grade, we move into Latin. So then they continue with Latin for a couple more years. And then at that point, they get to make a choice whether they want to continue with uh, Mandarin, Latin, Spanish, or French. So that's when they get to choose their electives as they get older. It's a very robust Okay, so middle and high school, and that's where our Shavano campus is. I'm over a little bit faster. Okay, so our middle school years are very, we call these the bridge years. And really the bridge years kind of start in fifth grade, really. Um, so it's really our AP prep program. So we want to make sure that we're getting the kids ready for that advanced placement program. Okay, um, Mr. Carson actually has worked at Shavano, so he's worked very closely with that program. Um, then our high school grades. Really, we think of it 9 through 12. It's really 8 through 12 because our AP courses start in 8th grade um, at basic. So that's why we kind of include it in that. Um, very unique opportunity because the kids really meet their graduation requirements in 11th grade. Um, and then there's senior project opportunities in 12th grade, which they're pretty neat, aren't they, Mr. Carson? <laughs> Okay, did I do all this already? No? Six and seven. Okay, I did. Um, so, grade six and seven, uh, you can see that that's a, a point. I think it's, is it seventh grade, Mr. Carson? What's that? When they start to have the choice of what language they want to have? Yes, ma'am. Okay, perfect. Okay, perfect. So, they did two years of Latin, and then that's when they move into it. Okay, perfect. And that's what we talked about. Great. So in grades 8 through 12, that's when the students, uh, we have that AP-based program. Um, and then we have our capstone classes. Oh, that's too loud, isn't it? My microphone? No? Um, so the capstone classes engage students in independent research, lab work, and seminar-style discussion. Sounds very much like college. Okay. Um, the courses span across academic discipline, and it serves as a bridge between high school academic standards and then college scholarship, of course. 
and then senior uh, projects are impressive projects and they're the result of students uh, progressive content mastery, time management, and organizational skills, and motivation to achieve at a high level. Um, and that it sets these students apart from the world's most prestigious colleges and universities. Speaking of, our college counselors, please, oh, there we go, um, work, I think I skipped it, maybe not, I apologize, but AP courses. So advanced class. Many of you parents may be taking some EP courses, advanced placement courses. Um, so it's just like college level work. Um, so that's what, these are required components of our uh, upper level program. Um, so the, they start as early as age, uh, as grade, grade, age, grade, excuse me, eight. Um, and then they're required to take them uh, starting in grade nine. And then they'll need to complete at least six of those courses prior to graduation. And these are just some examples, um, elective classes uh, that we have, that we offer, that I don't, I know for sure I did not have any of these classes uh, offered when I was in high school. That's for sure. Like, hmm, I didn't have any introduction to linguistics when I was in school. There is no way. Or neuroscience, no. So this is what it gives them. It gives these students an opportunity to try out different things. So you're not, um, I don't know if wasting is the right word. It might be all of this money when they are in college and then trying to maybe figure out what they might want to possibly do uh, in the future. So it kind of gives them an opportunity, you know, try a little bit of this, a little bit of that, um, and see maybe what, what they might want to do when they get over. Pretty neat. So this gives you an idea of what you know a senior year might look like. Um, okay. Um, so senior project examples. We have lots of different examples. Some of these I'm pretty sure I have never heard of the word lysopeptides um, in my life. Uh, but these are what our seniors are doing at in basis. So effects of neuroprotective lysopeptides in rodent models of Parkinson's disease. I mean, this is amazing. This is work by 17, 18 year old kids. Um, building a self-driving vehicle using artificial intelligence and the internet of things. I mean, this is amazing work. And this is what these kids do their senior year in high school. This is amazing. It's, it's neat to see. And these kids, I mean, they can choose to, you know, graduate, but they choose to do these senior projects and, and go with it. So it's pretty neat to see this. Speaking of getting ready for college, mom and dad, these are just a sampling of some of the college's acceptances uh, from last year alone. Um, and I, maybe some of you see uh, where you went to. So college counselors work diligently to help our graduates take advantage of course uh, of these scholarship opportunities. So they work very closely with the kids. It's not necessarily put on you, mom and dad, to, you know, okay, make sure that they're, you know, um, so they work very closely with them to make sure that they're, um, there's another number on the end, by the way, just so you know. <laughs> Pretty impressive. And then these are just a sample of extracurricular activities that are offered um, in the upper level, of course, as well. Um, and some of these do overlap here. We have Lego Club here at this school. Chess club, of course, we have here. Um, I know we've had board game club in the past, robotics we've had. Um, so a lot of these continue on. And we do have National Elementary Honor Society here that starts in fourth grade. Uh, so we start them pretty young. So of course, all of these enhance the students' uh, school experience. I mean, this is where they build a lot of these relationships with, with kids and even in a lot of the other grade levels too. Um, so it's pretty neat to see this. So I know you're probably going to go out, meet these teachers, get to see the classrooms. Um, I know they're excited to see some of the kiddos and meet some of you parents. Um, so if you have any questions, I know I have my business card. I believe it's in the back. Um, there were some maps as well in the back. Please take any uh, further information and we'll be kind of floating around here in the building if you have any questions, but please feel free to make your way throughout the building. And uh, thank you so much for coming this evening. We look forward to hopefully seeing you soon. So thank you.
And the date, mag the magical date is when, Mr. Porter? January? January 12th. Okay, sounds great. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, thank you. I wish I talked very fast. Thank you. Yeah. No. 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 Thank you for coming. 